In 2002, the Detroit Tigers went 55-106, and which was tied for the worst record in all of baseball with the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Detroit's 0-2 campaign was one of profound futility. However, in their following season, things got much, much worse. The 2003 Tigers had one of the worst years in baseball history, losing a staggering 119 games, the second most losses in the modern baseball era. Though this season seems to be forgotten in time, I argue that it needs a closer look. More teams nowadays are embracing the tanking method, which means they are putting a mostly non-competitive team on the field in an effort to lose more games and obtain higher draft picks to build for their future. As modern teams do this, they should recognize a fairly recent record of profound awfulness that is the O3 Tigers, and what they are setting themselves up against. In this case study, we will be delving into just how truly terrible the Tigers were during their O3 campaign. And we'll see some recognizable names on this O3 team too, like Carlos Pena, Dimitri Young, Brandon Inge, Omar Infante, a first-year Cody Ross, a young Fernando Rodney, an older Steve Avery in his last season, first-year manager Alan Trammell, and then-catcher AJ Hinch, who now manages the Astros. So, let's search through this shipwreck, and what better way to discuss this team than with 119 facts about their season in recognition of their record 119 losses. The Detroit Tigers went 43 and 119 in 2003 for a winning percentage of 265. This is the sixth lowest win percentage for any team in the modern baseball era. Their 119 losses are the most among any American League team in history. They broke the previous AL record of 117, which was set all the way back in 1916 by the Philadelphia Athletics. The only team in the modern era with more losses than the 03 Tigers is the 1962 New York Mets, who, in their inaugural season, lost 120 of their 160 games. The team was led by first-year manager Alan Trammell. According to payroll estimations, his team had the sixth lowest payroll in all of baseball. In Trammell's three years managing the Tigers, he would never have a winning season. Before the season began, the Tigers went 9-19 and in spring training with a 321 winning percentage, according to spring training records. They were the fourth worst spring training team that season behind the Padres, Angels, and Devil Rays. In 2003, several teams won more than twice as many games as the Tigers did. In the American League, the Yankees, Athletics, Red Sox, Mariners, Blue Jays, and White Sox won twice as many games or more than the Tigers. In the National League, the Braves, Giants, Marlins, Astros, and Phillies won twice as many games or more. In total, 11 teams won twice as many games than the Tigers did. They finished the season 47 games out of first place, with their lowest standing being 49 games back. Since the divisional era, only four teams have finished more games out. The 18 Orioles finished 61 games out of their division, the 98 Marlins finished 52 games out, the 98 Devil Rays finished 51, and the 02 Devil Rays finished 48 games back. With the exception of opening day, the Tigers only managed 30,000 fans or more at a home game twice, according to attendance records. They lost all three of these 30,000 or more attended home games. Furthermore, they only managed 20,000 fans or more at a home game 17 times. They were 3-14 and 14 in those 17 games. In the video game MVP Baseball 2003, of 32 teams, the Tigers were ranked 31st overall, as well as 31st in pitching and batting. They also placed in the bottom half in both defense and speed. All season, the Tigers only won 9 of the 36 games they played against AL East teams, good for a winning percentage of 250. They only won 6 of the 32 games they played against AL West teams, for a winning percentage of 188. In interleague play, they went 4 and 14 with a 222 winning percentage. They went 3-13 and 13 in extra inning games with a 188 winning percentage. They lost 20 or more games in the months of March-April, June, and August. 
They played in 52 different series throughout the 162 game season. They only won or split even 9 of them. Furthermore, the Tigers were completely swept in 21 different series. They opened their season with 9 straight losses, which is tied for the 7th worst start to a season in history. Their longest winning streak was only 4 games, from May 4th to May 7th. Their longest losing streak was 11 games, the longest in all of baseball that season. They not only had the season's longest losing streak with 11, but also the second longest with 10. They twice more lost 9 games in a row. They had 7 different streaks of 7 or more losses in a row. The Tigers' most recent World Series winning season was in 1984. One of the more famous facts from that championship season is that they opened it up with a most impressive 35-5 record through their first 40 games. By comparison, through the first 40 games of 2003, Detroit went 9-31. Detroit's 119 losses had to fall somewhere. The Tigers featured the three pitchers with the three highest loss counts in all of baseball in the 03 season. Mike Maroth had 21, Jeremy Bonderman had 19, and Nate Cornejo had 17. It was the only time in history in which the pitchers with the three highest loss counts in baseball were all on the same team. Mike Moralt's 21 losses made him the first 20-game loser since 1980, when Brian Kingman of the Oakland A's accomplished the feat. Moralt had begun the season by losing his first six decisions. On his seventh start of the year, he took a no-hitter against Baltimore into the eighth inning, before surrendering four runs and taking his seventh straight loss. No pitcher notched as many as 10 wins for the team, and Maroth actually led his team in wins with 9. Maroth also gave up 34 home runs in 2003, tied for the most in the American League. Fernando Rodney, who appeared in 27 games, had an ERA of 6.07, a whip of 1.753, and allowed 5.2 walks per 9 innings. Let's briefly talk about the statistic known as Fielding Independent Pitching aka FIP, or simply FIP. This is similar to ERA, but focuses on events that the pitcher has total control over, such as strikeouts, walks, hit-by-pitches, and home runs. Just like ERA, the lower the FIP, the better. A FIP above 5.0 would be considered... very poor. The Tigers had three pitchers with 100 or more innings and a FIP above 5, in Adam Brunero, Matt Roney, and Mike Maroth. Four of the five pitchers who threw 100 or more innings with the Tigers had an ERA above 5 in Mike Maroth, Jeremy Bonderman, Adam Brunero, and Matt Roney. The Tigers had four players with 300 or more plate appearances and an on-base percentage under 300 in Shane Halter, Brandon Inge, Craig Monroe, and Ramon Santiago. They had four players with 400 at-bats and a batting average below 250 in Craig Monroe, Ramon Santiago, Carlos Peña, and Bobby Higginson. Infielder Ramon Santiago was one of only two players that season to have more than 400 at-bats and a slugging percentage below 300. The other was Brad Osmus. With the exception of opening day, Brandon Inge, who played in 104 games with 330 at-bats, did not have his batting average rise above 200 until August 18th. He would finish the year with a 203 average. Alex Sanchez played the first part of the season with the Brewers, and then was traded to the Tigers mid-season. Between both teams, Sanchez was caught stealing 24 times, which led all of baseball. In his 101 games with Detroit, he was caught stealing 18 times, which led all AL players. The Tigers had 11 players play in 81 or more games, or half of the 162 game total. Of these 11, 10 had a war either at or below 2.0. No other major league team even had more than 8 players who played 81 games with wars below 2. You may find that Detroit's pitching was technically not the worst in most areas, and this is true. 
In fact, in most statistical categories, the Tigers typically fall behind the Texas Rangers in terms of worst pitching ability. However, Texas's loss count during the 03 season was a mere 91, 28 fewer than Detroit had. This was largely due to the Rangers' greater run support. For example, the Rangers hit the most home runs in all of baseball that year with 239. So, even though Detroit pitching technically may not have been the worst, it was awfully close to it in most areas, and is worth noting and discussing. On average, Detroit allowed 5.73 runs per game all season, which was the second worst in all of baseball behind the Texas Rangers, who allowed 5.98 runs per game. The Tigers' team ERA of 5.3 was the second worst in all of baseball behind the Rangers, who had an ERA of 5.67. They allowed 928 runs, which was second in baseball behind Texas's 969. They gave up 1,616 hits all season, the second most in the American League behind Texas's 1,625. They had a combined team whip of 1.510, second in the American League behind Texas's 1.554. They allowed 10.1 hits per 9 innings, which was second in baseball behind Texas's 10.2. They allowed 10 or more runs 21 times, the second most in baseball that year behind Texas's 27. They lost all 21 of those games. Detroit had the second highest FIP in all of baseball at 5.01. This was actually second behind the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, who had a FIP of 5.12. While in a lot of areas, Detroit's pitching was second behind the Rangers or a different team, they also managed to be the worst in other areas. For example, they had the fewest saves of any team in baseball with 27. No pitcher on the team had any more than 5 saves all season. The Tigers gave up 48 triples, more than any other team in 2003. Tigers pitchers struck out 764 batters total in 2003, the fewest in all of baseball in the entire 21st century. They are one of only two teams in the 21st century to strike out fewer than 800 batters, with the other being the 2002 Tigers, who had 794 Ks. To give you context, Kansas City's pitching had the second fewest strikeouts in 2003, banning 865 batters, a full 101 more than the Tigers had. Let's talk briefly about ERA+. This is a statistic that factors a player or team's ERA and normalizes it across the league to account for things like ballpark factors and opponents. Contrary to ERA, the higher the ERA+, plus, the better. In 2003, the Detroit Tigers had the lowest ERA plus in the American League at 81. American League teams, like the Tigers, typically have better offense due to the designated hitter rule. But even with this rule, Detroit not only ranked the worst in most offensive categories in the American League, but in many categories throughout all of MLB with some of their records carrying historical significance. For example, they had the lowest collective team batting average in all of baseball at 240. This was also the lowest batting average for any team throughout the entire 2000s. They had the fewest runs scored in the American League with 591 all season. By comparison, the Cleveland Indians, the second lowest in the AL behind Detroit, scored 699 runs, a full 108 runs more. The 2003 Tigers were one of only three teams in the 2000s to score fewer than 600 runs in a season. They had fewer runs scored per game than any other American League team, with 3.65 per game. They had fewer hits than any other team in baseball, with 1,312. This was also the fewest hits by an American League team in the 2000s. They led the entire AL in batter strikeouts, with 1,099. They hit 201 doubles, which was the worst in all of baseball, in the entire 21st century. All season, they had 393 extra base hits. They were the only team in the entire decade to have fewer than 400 extra base hits. They had the lowest sacrifice bunt success rate in the American League at 57%. They had the lowest on-base percentage of any team in baseball at 300. They had the lowest slugging percentage of any AL team at 375. 
as you might expect after the last two facts, they had the lowest OPS or on-base plus slugging in the American League at 675. The AL team average in 2003 was 761. Similar to the aforementioned ERA+, plus, OPS+, plus is a statistic that takes OPS and considers things like ballpark factors. With this statistic, 100 is always considered league average, and the higher the number, the better a player or team is offensively. Detroit's OPS Plus was the lowest in the American League at 83. This was also the lowest of any AL team throughout the entire 2000s decade. Their team BABIP, or batting average on balls in play, was 272, which was the lowest for any team in 2003. Let's talk about a formula known in the sabermetric world as runs created. This stat predicts the number of runs a player, or in this case, a team, will score in a season. So the higher the runs created, the better. They had the fewest runs created of any AL team at 610.8. The Cleveland Indians, the next closest in the American League, had 695.4 runs created. They had the lowest runs created per game of any AL team at 3.8. Isolated power is a statistic that weighs a player, or in this case, an entire team's offense based on extra base hits. As you might expect, the higher the ISO, the better offensively the player or team is. Detroit's 03 isolated power, or ISO, was the lowest in the American League at 135. They had the fewest total bases of any AL team all season, with 2050. 